joining us today for another installment in Frost and Sullivan's exciting podcast series highlighting key disruptive technologies, economic trends, new business models, industry convergence as well as emerging geographies. I'm Neha Anna Thomas, senior economist with Frost and Sullivan, and today we will be looking at the 2019 global economic outlook. Now, at the outset, what we expect is for the world economy to enter a phase of slowdown in 2019. There are various factors that are expected to pull down growth, key of which are the ongoing trade wars. There are also the restraints of emerging market capital outflows, as well as higher interest rate hikes that are happening both across developed as well as emerging economies. Global GDP growth is expected to slow down from 3.7% in 2018 to 3.5% in 2019. Now, this is assuming that additional tariffs imposed back in 2018 continue as is in 2019. If, however, trade wars intensify or accelerate, growth slowdown is expected to be much sharper to around 3.2%. Moving on to other global economic trends, on the topic of oil prices, we're expecting Brent crude oil prices to average around $60 in 2019. Now, while prices did pick up in 2018 to around $70 on average, there was a marked slowdown in the last quarter of the year on account of factors such as higher production from major producers such as US, Russia, as well as Saudi Arabia. Moving on to a regional economic analysis, our deliverable looks at six regions and beginning with North America covering US and Canada, we're expecting growth to slow down across both these economies in 2019. The US, of course, is expected to continue to face pressures from ongoing trade wars, with businesses having to deal with the impact of higher import tariffs by pursuing measures such as layoffs or passing costs to consumers or even looking to relocate production in order to deal with these higher tariffs. Key economic developments that are expected to shape the future of North America, the first, of course, one is that of NAFTA or NAFTA 2.0, which is the new trade deal that's expected to be ratified in 2019. The finalization and ratification of this particular trade deal should bring back a lot of manufacturing to North America. Failure to ratify NAFTA, however, is expected to create a lot of investor uncertainty across the region. Another very important economic trend, of course, is that of U.S. interest rate hikes. So while rate hikes are expected to continue into 2019, the pace is expected to be much slower than in 2018. Moving over to Latin America, covering an analysis of Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Argentina and Venezuela. Brazil, Mexico and Colombia are expected to see their growth recover in 2019. Argentina and Venezuela, on the other hand, are expected to remain in recession. A key economic risk to the region is its vulnerability to trade wars, both direct as well as indirect effects. Latin America, in fact, has a very large trade surplus with the US, which puts it at the risk of direct possible tariffs. The next region is Africa, covering Tanzania, Kenya, South Africa, as well as Nigeria. We're expecting to see growth acceleration across all these economies in 2019. The pace of growth of course, is expected to be different, with South Africa and Nigeria expected to register growth in the region of 1-2%. to Tanzania and Kenya, however, are expected to see nearly 6% growth. Looking at Europe more closely now, Germany, the UK, Italy, France and Russia to be specific. We're already seeing growth slowing down across these economies and we expect this trend to continue into 2019. A very important development in the region, of course, is that of Brexit. 
And with the recent voting down of the Brexit deal, there are various scenarios that could play out over the next couple of weeks. We could see a renegotiation of the Brexit deal or perhaps an extension of the timeline that takes place for the negotiations. And there's the ever-looming risk of a no-deal Brexit scenario playing out, which would drastically weigh upon the UK's GDP as well as its trade growth. If, however, a deal is approved and a transition period comes into place, business is expected to remain as usual for about 21 months between the UK and EU, lasting until December 2020. Looking more closely at Germany, Germany has been pulled down by trade wars because of its nature as an export powerhouse. So we're seeing restraints both direct as well as on account of the indirect effect of trade wars. Now moving over to Italy, the country's economic outlook has brightened in the last couple of days because of the resolving of a standoff with the EU over the country's 2019 budget. So while our projections were weaker in the last quarter of 2018, the growth projections have improved for Italy. Now on to Middle East, covering an analysis of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Iran and Turkey. While we expect a pickup in growth in Saudi Arabia and Iran, Turkey and Iran are expected to see their growth contract. A key restraint to the region, of course, are the anticipated OPEC oil production cuts. Lastly, looking more closely at Asia Pacific, covering China, India, Japan, Indonesia and Australia. Looking at the emerging market China and India, we're expecting Chinese growth to slow down to 6.2% in 2019, which is quite a large slowdown, largely because of the ongoing trade wars. Of course, if trade wars accelerate or intensify, China is expected to come under a lot more pressure. India's growth is expected to marginally weaken, but it's expected to continue to remain on quite a high growth trajectory, with 7% growth projected for the fiscal 2019-2020. So on account of the trade wars, we are seeing a lot of decisions to relocate away from China or to move investments out of China. And at the same time, what this is doing is creating growth opportunities for countries such as Vietnam and Thailand. So Southeast Asia seems to be benefiting from a lot of the decisions to move investment out of China with investors increasingly exploring, setting up locations in these destinations. Based on the analysis explained above, I hope you have a fair summary of what can be expected for the world economy in 2019. Our 2019 Global Economic Outlook Report provides much more detail and insight and has especially been designed to help improve your strategic planning capabilities for 2019. On that note, we hope you enjoyed this session. For further insights, please join us for future podcasts and become a member of our Leadership Council. To get started, email us at myfrost at frost.com. Thank you for joining us.